Hello, and welcome to VN. In this episode, I speak to Olympic silver medalist and former UFC title challenger, Sarah McMahon. We discuss her departure from Team Alpha Male, receiving a brown belt from Marcelo Garcia, and the team for her upcoming fight. VN is brought to you by C4 Energy. Go to c4energy.com and enter Full Reptile at the checkout to receive 30% off your order. For more information, go to the link below. Unfortunately, since speaking to Sarah last week, her upcoming fight with Caitlin Vieira has been canceled due to injury. We wish Sarah a speedy recovery and hope to see her back in action soon. Despite the sad news, we still had a great conversation, so stay tuned and enjoy the show. So how's uh, how's training camp going? Oh, uh, really good. I'm just at the point where it's like the last hard week. Yeah. So I'm exhausted. <laughs> but, but good, you know, like it's like, you know, I was healthy the whole time. I was able to push it. So it's just that final grind that's <laughs> that needs to be done and not get injured. So it's like nerve wracking too. <laughs> <laughs> There's like injury and now COVID to deal with. It's I know, crazy. I know. Yeah. Yesterday the, I was the... over at, sorry, what were you going to say? No, go ahead. Uh, yesterday no. I was over at therapy and, um, and well, she was telling me about how one of the athletes tested one positive for COVID and like two negative and they were like freaking out because might not be able to go to like the, the Paralympics. And it was just, there's just so oh, much man. extra to deal with now as, as an athlete, if you're going to compete. Cause it's, yeah, it's a lot of, it's BS too. Cause like some people have like no symptoms at all. So it's like, should they not be allowed to compete if they, I mean, I, I understand they could spread it and I get that, but it's just really tough because if you have two negative, you know, like there, there are false positives, you know, like, so, so <laughs> to take away something over a, a possibly faulty test is tough. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Have, have you been training with, um, with anybody different in this camp? Or like who well, are so, people around you? Yeah. So I have, um, I was training at Alpha Male and then I decided mm-hmm. to leave there. And um, so I basically have the training partners that we opened our own gym. We had mm-hmm. more jiu-jitsu people, um, but I brought in uh, Zach Mikowski. He's a former UFC fighter and Bellator champion. And uh, he he's a flyweight. And so when they had like that big mass cut of the flyweights, mm-hmm. when I think they were trying to like end the division, like he was a part of that. And so um he's been fighting in like other organizations, but it's like super, super tough. Like they, I don't know, like that's, he's flying overseas a lot. And with COVID, like a lot of their stuff was like really shut down more than, you know, obviously everything was shut down besides the UFC. Um, but he's a phenomenal training partner. He has a wrestling background, um, but really, really excellent guy. So he's going to be cornering me too, but Um, in my gym too, I have a guy that fights for Bellator, Eric Sanchez, Mm -hmm. and he's a great partner. He's a weight class above me, um, but phenomenal fighter. So super tough training partner. And then the rest of my gym, like we have like some Muay Thai fighters. And so they'll come in and work with me and beat me up. (laughs) (laughs) Not that part too much. (laughs) Well, it shows me where I need to learn. So. (laughs) <laughs> but, but yeah it's not but it's a hard learn lesson uh wait one second sorry it just it kind of cut off oh. a little bit wait you're still oh. there we go you're back now <laughs> yeah it froze <laughs> sorry yeah no I heard more or less what you said but it was it was just kind of like the you know when yeah. the internet connection is bad it's like that is a learning process and, and you get to learn a, a lot from them <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah um in, in hard ways <laughs> yeah it, how how is the because I, I just feel like it, it must be very very different going from in a gym that has just so many people there all the time and compared to now a gym where you have the freedom to choose who comes in and it like it's just it seems 
like you can control it better and you just since you're such a disciplined person do you enjoy that more uh so I did find out I actually I'm a small gym fighter um I didn't know that about myself and I'd gone I always had gone and trained um at other places like I'd gone up to TriStar I've gone to AKA like even whenever I lived like and trained in a small gym I would still go to the some of the bigger gyms just for like a week just, you know um but for me I didn't realize that like because fighting is such a it's so hard on your body that like for me to actually get the best out of my training sessions like trusting my partners is like a really really big deal and so like whenever I'm in a small gym my uh, my partners really, we care about each other. We care yeah. about each other doing well. So we'll push each other, but we care about each other's well being. You know, we know we don't want to knock each other out of fights. Where sometimes in the bigger gyms, I feel like, um, especially if you're coming in, but also like even if you train there, I feel like they treat it like it's a fight, you know? And so they don't, they, they say that they, they're not trying to hurt each other, but they hurt each other like every other week. Like and people have to pull out of fights and people get concussions and stuff. And I'm like, I think a small gym environment where people um, are looking out for me and I'm looking out for them like that. I seem to thrive better in that kind of environment. Yeah, yeah absolutely. But was it because like the gym stuff has always been such a, uh, I guess like a cultural thing that it has become. Has it been that way? Sorry, I'm like stuttering all over my words. I'm so nervous. <laughs> I'm like listening to myself like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's like a really bad, like sort of like a first day you step on the person's feet. You're like, they're never going to call me again. <laughs> I'm sorry. But it's like, no. Was, was it weird like leaving? Has it been like animosity? Do you feel like is there's some bad blood or was it like all all right to, to start off and branch by yourself? So not, it wasn't animosity on my part. Um, like there, there probably, there was a little saltiness, you know, like the re I didn't leave on good terms, you know, like mm -hmm. I didn't leave on terrible terms, but I didn't leave on good terms. Um, and so I, but I'm like, you know what, I'm, I'm doing my own thing now. Like, I wish you the best, good luck with your stuff and your life. And I, you know, like I'm not holding anything against anybody. I'm just I need to do what's right for me. They need to do what's right for them. And so I'm just not, uh, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not stressed about it. So if there is any like, lingering stuff, it's on part, not mine. It's kind of yeah. just like catching my part of my face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I have to hide my car because I have a child and otherwise we would not be able to talk at all. <laughs> <laughs> the new <laughs> yeah quite a young one as well <laughs> no worries yeah, hide, hiding away from him <laughs> <laughs> I've seen like so many videos of like moms like in a pantry just crying like I just want peace I'm so sick of them <laughs> and then it's always like the child right outside like knocking on the door waiting for the mom to come out <laughs> he just like time calls grandparents so he'd be like so he's like you know he this would be a facetime call for her. <laughs> like my closest sign language no it's not it's not working out <laughs> is, is there anything like in in particular that um well that like makes it a lot harder like dur during like closer to weigh in and closer to to when you fight because like for me for example I feel I feel agitated or or I'll get like angry and stuff like that and I just can't imagine like with with, with a child it's just being so much more difficult because you feel like you just have to not yeah. so not back in the most of the time it's not that bad because like you feel compassionate. Like they, they don't know what's going on and like, they still need their needs met, you know? Um, mm -hmm. but you like Chad will, he takes a, a little bit more, you know? So like, he just see like, come on. And he'll, he'll kind of rally the kids towards him. Um, which is hard because they go towards the mom. So like, it's, you know, he just kind of like, he can see me being like, okay. Cause like, so I had a hard run, 
yesterday morning. And as soon as I got back, my son's at the, our mats, cause they have jujitsu practice. And he's like, run, race, race. And I was like, <laughs> daddy's going to race you. <laughs> like, I'm like, no kid, I'm done. I am so tired. I need to stretch, you know, so, but they're, they're pretty cool. Like I had one time, um, my daughter, I was cutting weight. I was pretty close to weigh-ins and she didn't want her hot dog. And so she like, it had like a hot dog with like mustard on it. And she like pushed it in my face and she's like, here, mom, you can have it. You know? And I was like, oh no. Cause I could smell it. <laughs> like at that point I would eat anything. I would have eaten a hot dog off of the ground. <laughs> that was a stranger's if I could do it without gaining weight. Um, so I, this is so, this is like, that's willpower right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is that the is that the thing that you struggle most with like discipline, the the food aspect of it? No, I think that the hardest part for me is like um the discipline for when I'm injured and taking the time off the appropriate time off. I always like I either try to come back in and get right back into it, which can lead to another injury, or like I'll be in denial. I'll be like, oh yeah, I just tweaked it a little bit, you know, or like, oh yeah, it's just a little tight, you know, but it's like, no, like you're just ignoring the fact that something's actually wrong and that you have to address it because it's either annoying exercises or stretches or, you know, even going to a doctor, but I've lived a long time in athletics, ignoring a lot of injuries, (laughs) but some of them in a one way, so I don't know. That's, that's the hardest part for me is having the discipline to like, to not be, you know, like, um, nervous or neurotic or, you know, push myself too hard, be too hard on myself. That's like this, the discipline to know when taking a little time off actually is moving me ahead. And if I don't like, cause I, I, the big thing for me is I always want to be taking steps forward. Um, and sometimes when you practice, when you shouldn't be practicing, you're taking steps back and then you, your nervous mind, that's like, Oh, I need to be working, you know, tells you, you should be doing it. But that's probably the hardest one for me. I hate injuries. I've gotten no better with coping with injuries in 26 years of sports. I hate it. (laughs) Every time. (laughs) especially those that take you out for a little bit or it's just it's just like for a little bit of time but you didn't give it the time so now it's a lot of time those are the worst I yeah yeah. rib injuries like that if you don't give it the proper amount of time as soon as you come back and you pop it again you start back from square one and that's the worst Did, did you have any really major injuries that maybe you could have avoided? Um, uh, no, uh, I don't think so. I think that most of my injuries, like they were probably acute injuries or like mm-hmm. even chronic injuries that like, I, I didn't know that they were a problem until they were a problem. And I ha I haven't like, most of them I've not made worse. Um, they don't get better, <laughs> but they, <laughs> I haven't had like a, a small knee problem that got my, blew my ACL out or anything like that. So I've been actually like, that's one of the things that has helped me do this as long as I have, is that I'm really, really lucky that I have not had a very major injury that required like a big surgery. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Dan's the same. He was like, yeah, I've had um, like one scar and that's it. And I'm like, I've had like 11 surgeries. <laughs> I'm like Frankenstein by this point. I don't um, even know how I'm still like standing. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's, it's amazing to me when like, it, but it's, it's been a lot, not in fights, but like you said, like in training camp or like in training when people are swearing that they're going light on you. And then, you know, after a minute, they're almost gassed from how hard they were trying to beat you up. Yeah. It's, it's, and- it's, it's I, I now say, like, I'm just not shy about it. I just say no to people. Like, if a bigger guy asks me, I'm like, nope, you're too big. And I just don't even make a, and if they press it, they're like, oh, come on. I'm like, they're like, oh, I'll go light. And I was like, 
you know, that's the exact same thing that every guy has said to me right before they injured me. It's amazing. Like <laughs> I go really light. I said, but you can't control gravity. You can't control gravity. And if your 225 pounds comes down on my ligament, you're going to win. My ligament will lose, you know, and they can't argue with that. I'm like, nope. And even, you know, it's really terrible, but um, if it was like a day that like, or if I shouldn't have been training or whatever, and people are like trying to kind of goad me into it, they're like, Oh, why aren't you training? Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, it's probably cause I suck because I'm lazy. <laughs> cause I'm a pussy. Cause I'm scared. <laughs> oh, go away. Like, <laughs> what if you're trying to goad me into it? It's not going to work. So yep. You're the best. I'm the worst. Bye. <laughs> like what was that? hard for you to, to to come to that to come to be okay with doing that because I mean yeah, with absolutely. <laughs> how, like how much you've accomplished I just yeah it's also because like with wrestling like it's the it's a lot of times like a, a a toughness a physical and mental toughness contest you know because we can't strike people and we can't take people against the joints and then moving into MMA I try I wanted to approach it like I did my wrestling which is, you know, like being up for whatever challenge. And, you know, like if somebody kind of challenges you, you accept it and you, you know, mm -hmm. but man, like it took me about a year in before I was like, this always works out bad for me because they are bigger and I'm smaller and they're experienced and I'm less experienced. And, you know, like, I'm like, I'm the one that keeps getting the short end of the stick. So then I'll be like to them, I'm like, what do you want to go with a little girl for? I was like, you can't go, you can't go with boys. You want to go with a little girl? <laughs> like, even though I'm like, you know, pretty skilled or whatever, but I just kind of turned around on them. Like, no, but that, that's like, that's fantastic. I honestly, I, I sometimes wish I, I would do more of that. I feel like a lot of my injuries have come from me being like, I don't want to say like feeling like I have something to prove, but like feeling like, a little bit like that but also like I like I can't I'm in a position where I can't say no because I'll look like like I'm lazy or I'm bad or 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 like I'm I don't know like scared or something yeah. so that's that I battled with the same thing but eventually like I just was like nope I don't give a crap what they think because I'm going to come in and train tomorrow and I'm going to come in and train the next day you know like so if somebody bigger I'm like oh you you like little, you like going with younger or smaller girls. I was like, you know, I'm a 135 pound girl. Like you think you're going to get, you think you're going to get better at beating those 200 pound guys by going with me? Like, <laughs> you know, so I think they're pussing out and they're trying to dodge the other guys in the gym. Yeah. That kind of helped out. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I'm start sometimes, using those. Yeah. Sometimes you got to use your to get out of things. <laughs> does that make it then harder to to find other training partners I guess because then like other guys are like they're thinking that about themselves uh for the for the guy to find other partners no like for, for you to train with uh, with other because I, I don't think there's going to be a lot of females that are going to be as strong or or sometimes give you a challenge in a certain area so like if, if you go with a guy, then after telling the other guy who's like, like a pussy or something, oh. like they'd struggle to be like, oh, I don't want to be the guy that's going with her now. Well, no, 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 no. Like guys my size, they get it because other small guys in the gym, they know exactly what I'm talking about. They're like, yeah. you know, they don't want to go with bigger people. I'm like, Cause I say like in jujitsu, they're all like, oh, weight doesn't matter. Yeah, it does. It does why we have weight classes because absolutely matters. You know, I said, that's also why we separate by gender. It matters, you know? So I was like, um, the little guys in my gym, the ones that compete at like 135 and 125 and stuff, they're like, they kind of think it's funny, you know, cause I call it out because as a guy, it's harder for them to say no. But for me, I'm like, I don't know. I'm, I'm also like older too. So like, I can just be a little bit more controversial. It's like, yeah, makes sense. Yeah. So I'm just like, no, why the hell would I want to go with you? <laughs> like, <laughs> did, like, did you have to 
you, I was like, the first move I would do is kick you in the crotch. I was like, that's my first. <laughs> I was like, and then as you bend over, I'm taking your eyes out. I was like, I would never fight you fair. <laughs> like, <laughs> you're way bigger than my own world would I fight you fair. <laughs> Absolutely. I feel like in the street, that's like the last thing I would do ever would be fight fair. <laughs> I was like, uh, first I'm putting on my running shoes. And if I keep running, there isn't going to be a fight. Track me. <laughs> <Yeah>, absolutely. <laughs> I, mean, I don't care how long I'm training. I, I know, like, anything can happen. There's no referee there. There's no rules, you know? Like, I'm not fighting you. So, but I'm like, it doesn't help me to train to get better. Like, it's different. My coaches can you know, hold mitts and then like kind of light spar with me, you know, mm -hmm. um, while they're doing it, like to keep your hands up and stuff like that. Like, and I trust them. Like if you're essentially like a black belt or, you know, a crew or whatever, then, you know, you're probably pretty good and, and you can control yourself. And I feel safe, uh, going with you, but the guys, like the guys in my gym still will like, they'll land, you know, they're not, they're not trying to like hurt you, but they'll land. And you, and you need that too. You need like things disrupting your motion. You need to like feel that kind of pressure, but I never feel like, oh man, that like, that, that was a, like a hard hit. You know, I never feel like that. Um, like, you know, like that, oh, I kind of saw stars a little bit. I don't think yeah. you should be doing that in practice yeah, and we'll like, go a little bit harder to the body kick the legs pretty good you know like but we're not trying to hurt each other you know and that's and sometimes when a bigger guy like he, I don't believe that like they're trying to hurt you but they're putting you in a dangerous position if mm -hmm. that makes sense because I've even had guys like going really light and just like slowly turn something over but but putting their weight and hips into it it you know it really like knocked me back far and I was like, I think, I don't think you understand weight classes, you know, like yeah. how much lower I am than you and how much force that's generated when you put something, you know, like put effort into something. And when I do. So, yeah, absolutely. Th does it make it easier that you're, or that your husband's a, it's a black belt and grappling Does or does it make it like. As, as in access to information versus if you go a little hard, I probably don't want to talk to you till tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> when we're rolling, like that's, that's, that's not a problem. Um, we've gotten in more arguments about like completely stupid stuff. Like if he's saying, if he's like helping me out while I'm rolling with somebody else, I'm like, I can't hear you. Could you speak up? You know, like, I'm like, I want, he's like, it. I was like, no, I want coaching. Like, but I don't want you to whisper to some person in the corner, like yell at me, <laughs> like here. So stupid stuff like that. But great because I can be like, hey, come here on the living room floor because I've been struggling with this position. And he's like, oh yeah, piece of cake, you know, and like he'll just he's able to resolve it right away, like something that's been plaguing me for like weeks. So that's nice. It, it is pretty handy having uh, a coach on call and we, and we get along better than any anybody that's ever like any partner that's ever tried to help me in a sport him and I get along the best but I get like you know you're saying like getting irritable towards a you know I I get like that when I hard spar too if I'm really really going hard if I'm having a really hard session it I get like agitated you know so like it's harder for me to control my voice I sound complete bitch because I am <laughs> like, I, like I frequently apologize to people afterwards but <laughs> sorry I was a bitch you I deserved it <laughs> after after one fights because Chad had to like I was on my period and we it just the one with Abu Dhabi it was just a lot of stuff you know and I made him a cake and I wrote on it or I, I bought him a cake and I wrote on it Sorry, I was a cunt. <laughs> I gave it to him at our gym. Because <laughs> it was like, you know, I was, I was very difficult to deal with. <laughs> I but I was, I was like, I was very low on carbs, okay? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> a, lot of, a, lot of stress, a lot of pressure going on there, so. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs>
<laughs> uh, I'm, I'm sure <laughs> I'm sure he doesn't mind <laughs> or gets no. it or he's very patient that's one thing grappling likes to teach you is to be so patient yeah in some moves I'm still waiting for that I'm still waiting for it to, to be made patient because <laughs> he's the opposite he is like super super laid back like if anything happens during camp he's just like he just brushes it off he's like ah she's cutting weight she won't even remember this but you know I'm like, what what did you say you know like I'm a lot more crazy than him <laughs> but, I'm crazy I'm more crazy it's balance you know we yeah. balance each other <laughs> and congratulations I saw you got a brown belt under Marcelo Garcia I, uh, that was but- uh, did, did you go up to New York for, for a belt testing or was it? Um... No, so um, I hadn't been able to go there for a really long time. I had wanted to go there for a really a while, but um, it was while I was pregnant, I was planning the next trip. And then after I had my baby, like, and I obviously had to recover, uh, COVID hit. So then that was another like year and a half that I couldn't go. So I was like, man, I haven't been there for like four years. And it was just like, I know it was like, so heartbreaking, you know, cause like, I wanted to go out there and train like they're super great training partners. And obviously Marcelo is amazing. So it was just like, I went out there cause I was like, I want to go there. He, um, watches my opponents, you know, and like gives me advice. He watches me roll. And then he just basically can see like a, the bird's eye view and be like, okay, these are instead of like specific, sometimes it's specific moves. And a lot of times it's more like correcting me, like, um, my philosophy, my approach, you know, like he really does it all. So, um, I was like, okay, I have a go out there and then I have like six weeks to, to work on the things that he wants me to correct or, you know, to make my jiu-jitsu better. Um, yeah. my fight. Yeah. Has he looked at, um, this fight coming up? with mm-hmm. Caitlin there yeah, like she's giving you like advice and stuff yeah yep yeah pretty sure you get like your husband hey living room now now <laughs> <laughs> I gotta practice that thing you told me <laughs> yes yes as no. um sorry has your has your husband helped with with building the game plan or is that something that that you see especially because you've been in there with her right and mm-hmm. you know you know, like what it feels like, how strong she is, how fast she moves, what she controls, pretty much like a, a really good understanding of, of her as a fighter. So did, did that make it better for you to then plan things around or did you still have a, like a head person that came and told you how? No. Um, so with Zach, like Zach was, is kind of acting in that role and that he is helping with a, a lot of that. Um, but basically like the, the areas that I need to work to improve myself are no, there it's, it's not new news. It's things that I've been mm-hmm. working on reinforcing some of those things. And then with Zach and, uh, we, we've watched everybody in their own area have watched her in particular. Um, and we, they all like have their game plans of what strengths of mind to use to like capitalize on her weaknesses. But one of the biggest things is the first time we fought, I didn't know she did judo. Um, And I've wrestled a lot of judo girls uh, and I approach them differently. And so like that makes it, it's a difference in like respecting the, their hips. And so in the, in the first fight, I didn't know that and it cost me, but now I'm like, Oh, this makes sense. She has a judo background. Yeah. Like I, I would have definitely done this. And like, I approach things differently because of that, but, but she was like more new to the UFC. There was like not at, you know, not much background information on her at all. So mm-hmm. I didn't find this stuff out until she actually been in the UFC longer. Yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. Absolutely. Yeah. It's not that I didn't respect her. It's just that I didn't even know what I needed to respect. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And like, I just feel when you're fighting like judo people, as soon as that hip goes, you're just like, no, get away. Yeah. But it just, it's immediate, the touch, it, it's like touch and go. It's yeah. very nice. And I find a lot of, a, a lot of like trickeries. I feel like with wrestling, it's a little bit more 
changing the, I don't know I'm, I'm talking to you what I feel is a wrestling I might sound like a complete <laughs> knobhead but like, what I feel is like it's, it's a lot of like changing of angles and like different doors and and there's just so much more like I feel trickery to to judo it's a little yeah, bit more I, like a foot sweep to your younger brother or something yeah, that off balance yeah yes and so it's also a little different too, because like um, there's some things that are better, like they have to have certain grips, um, mm-hmm. especially with judo, but it's hard to hold a human the same way. Um, so now I know like, oh, when having her ties, getting her preferable ties, you know, that's exactly what we fought in wrestling all the time is never letting anybody have the ties that they want and you getting the ties that you want, you know? So like it's... Um, it's something that's more natural to me because wrestling, you know, wrestling is a lot of upper body hand fighting, but yeah, it is like little foot sweeps and things like that, but you have to be in the, in the right position for those to happen. So I, did you face a lot of um, judokas in your wrestling career? Yeah, I did. Especially like um, we did um, Pan Am games, like some of the girls in the U S like some of the best girls that I went against um, were, had a judo background and they have a different feel. And then, um, girls that were, um, in South America, a lot of them had like a a judo background. A lot of the Japanese girls will have judo in their like gym classes and things like that. So they're just familiar with it. Mm -hmm. Is it, would it be like very difficult for you to to transition from wrestling to judo? Like, uh, I mix it, if that makes sense. High level. Um, the rules they used to have where they had like fireman's carries and re- they had wrestling moves within it. And now it's yeah. like a lot less of that. So it would be a little more foreign to me. Um, mm-hmm. But I have to go. I have to go to my oh, wrestling. Yes. Game. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't even realize the time. Okay. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Of course. Well, right. Have fun. Thank you so much for your time. Hopefully I'll get to speak to you again. And next time I'll sound less dorky and nervous. <laughs> <laughs> All, All right, right. bye bye. Have a good day. Bye. You too.